everybody, I'm Kombucha Kev, and with this video, I'll be going over the different fermentation vessels available if you're looking to scale up your kombucha homebrew. So maybe you're like me, you might have started doing gallon batches, but you soon found out that wasn't enough. So you're looking around to seeing how you could scale that up. What I see a lot of people do is they go from this gallon batch method over to a continuous brew system. So this would be a two and a half gallon porcelain vessel. And I won't get too in-depth on the process of continuous brew, but essentially it would start the same way. You'll make your batch of tea with starter kombucha in your SCOBY, but when it's time to bottle your kombucha, you wouldn't draw off the whole container of it. Instead, you would only draw off maybe two or three bottles worth, replace that with sweet tea, and then wait for that to convert to kombucha. And you'll just be continuously drawing off only maybe two or three bottles at a time. Whereas batch method, you would bottle the whole thing. So the benefit is that tea would turn a lot more quickly because there's a higher percentage of starter kombucha in here. But I think the drawback that I noticed was I had to do it more frequently. So probably like once a week, whereas Doing the batch method, I would only be doing it you know, every two, three weeks or so. Um, so I didn't like that aspect of it, but I also got tired of having to clean flip top bottles. So that's what led me to start looking for alternatives that would allow me to keg within a five gallon corny keg. Going that route, you would actually need about six or seven gallons, six or seven gallon vessel so that you have enough to not only fill your five gallon keg, but you'll also have enough starter for the next batch. So this first option I started using is a glass vessel from Northern Brewer. It's called the Big Mouth Bubbler. And unlike most carboys that have a very tapered and small opening, this one has a really wide mouth. So you can get your scobies in and out. If you're doing your secondary fermentation in here, you can get any of that fruit out. And it makes it really easy um, to do kombucha in here. SCOBY can breathe, and it's easy to clean. Um, it also has options. As you see, there's a spigot out front here. Um, there's also options if you don't want that spigot. They sell a closed version as well. Um, I also like that it comes with this harness here. It makes it easy to move. Um, it is a little loose, which kind of concerned me if moving it too much, but it got the job done, and I didn't have any accidents with it when I was moving. I think the drawback of this is the fact that it's glass. Not as durable as other materials, and I've actually broken a couple of these when I was cleaning. Um, just really the slightest bump in the wrong spot and the vessel's done. Um, so that's what kind of led me to start looking into stainless steel. And the one thing to point out if you go the stainless steel route is you need to have three or four graded stainless steel or better. And that goes even with these spigots out front here. Um, if you're going to be using spigots, you want to make sure you get that 304 stainless steel. This, for instance, comes with a plastic spigot, which is okay if you're dispensing water, but with kombucha and the higher pH, you need that graded stainless steel. Um, so this first option I have here is with SS Brewtech. It's called their brew bucket. It has a six and a half gallon capacity, and I really like that it comes with these really heavy duty clamps and this lid with a hole for an airlock. So if you're doing your secondary fermentation in here, it's set up to go as is. It also has a really nice spigot out front here. The conical shape at the bottom allows any kind of extra yeast or sediment to accumulate in the bottom and then you can still funnel off the top of that. So I love this system, but the one thing that I thought topped it is this mash and boil by Brewer's Edge, which is an all-in-one system. So you'll see at the bottom, there's actually a burner within this unit, so you can set it for the temperature you want. And I'd say it takes probably about 45 minutes for the water to get to the temperature you need. But from there, you can throw your tea in. There's this strainer basket in here. So when it's done brewing, you just pull the basket out, put your starter tea in it, uh, put your kombucha in here, and it's where you're ready to go. And then when you're ready for your secondary fermentation, there's an optional lid you can get that has 
the hole for your airlock. Um, so this is what I use as my go-to right now. Um, I just like that it's all in one, it's quick and easy, and there's no need to transfer like these other vessels here. It's just all contained. Um, so these are the three, the several different options that I've used. Um, the one other thing I wanted to point out is scaling up to these bigger vessels, I felt the need for better cleaning supplies. So I know gallon batches, a lot of people use distilled vinegar. Um, scaling up to these, I started using brewing materials. Um, so this one is Five Star PBW, which is a food grade cleaner. So the way this would work is you pour some into your vessel, pour some water in and scrub it around with a brush. And then you have to rinse it thoroughly, but it'll get any kind of you know, tea, fruit, or anything left over from the fermentation process out. Um, and then I also follow up with some star sand. Um, so this is an acid sanitizer. You basically dilute it in water. I, I will usually keep like a five gallon bucket full of that solution going all the time. That way I could sanitize all my equipment and make sure it's all clean and ready to go. Um, but yeah, essentially that's what I wanted to cover. Um, there's a number of different options as far as your brewing vessels if you want to scale up. Um, I lean towards the stainless steel just for the durability, um, but you know any of them will work. Um, so I hope that helps you with your uh, scaling up efforts. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you like this video. I'll be doing a tutorial on doing a batch of kombucha in this uh, Brewer's Edge next, so stay tuned.